What's up guys, Eric here from Techisode TV and today I'm going to be showing you guys why multi-window is awesome on the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. Now, a lot of these features aren't going to be brand new features. They have existed on previous Samsung devices. So if you have an older Galaxy device, definitely check yours to see if you have these multi-window features as well. This video is going to be covering everything from the basics to the most advanced features and even a hidden feature at the end that you're definitely not going to want to miss, especially if you enjoy apps like Netflix. One more thing before we start, as always this video is shot wide on purpose, so if you have a Galaxy S9 or S9 Plus or another device with a similar aspect ratio, you can go ahead and hit that full screen button now and not have to worry about cutting off any part of the video. The first thing you need to know is how to open multi-window. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is tap the resnaps button, then tap any of these dual rectangles on any application you want to open in multi-window mode. So let's go ahead and open YouTube and then select any other application. Let's go with Twitter. So here I can scroll through YouTube on the top and I can scroll through Twitter on the bottom independent of each other and keep both open at the same time. You can also use Bixby to open multi-window. All you have to do is say something like, Hi Bixby. Open YouTube and Twitter in multi-window. Okay, here they are. And there you go. Now I've got YouTube and Twitter both open in multi-window. Now there's another way that you can open multi-window as well. Let's say I only had YouTube open and I want to quickly snap another window below it. All I have to do is long press the resnaps button and then tap another application and then that will pop up below it. Now that second method I just showed you may not be on by default. In order to turn that on, just pull down your notification shade, go to your settings, go to advanced features, scroll down to multi-window, and then enable this use recents button here. And what this is going to do is allow you to, as you saw, hold the recent apps button and open up a second app in multi-window view. Another quick way to get into the settings is to tap the resnaps button, tap the three dots in the corner, tap settings, and that takes you right into the multi-window settings. Now, while we're in the settings, there's a couple more things I wanna show you. As you can see, there are two different modes to open a multi-window in. You can open it in split screen view, which is the traditional two apps side-by-side -side type mode. And then there's also a snap window mode. Now, the way this one is different is it takes a small chunk of the image and then pins that to the top and then you get pretty much a full application below it. Now to demonstrate that, I am going to open up Twitter and then I will long press the resnaps button. Now here is this snap window mode. So if I go and I highlight just this tweet here and tap done, it's going to keep that up at the top. And then I can open up another application and scroll through that application just fine. Now this pinned window is really good if Maybe you have like a coupon code you want to use, but it's not text that you can select and copy. You can pin just the coupon code to the top and then have a bunch of real estate left for any other application. Now, this snap window does have a few limitations. If I try to scroll all the way to the top, you'll notice that it stops shy of the top. And that's because I took the snap from right about here on the screen. So everything above this where I can get to a profile or any of the options at the top of the screen on Twitter don't show up here because the snap stopped at about right here. So everything above that doesn't show. And it'll do that on the bottom of an application as well. Now, Twitter just infinitely scrolls, so I can't actually get to a stop point to demonstrate that, but it's basically the same thing you see here, but on the bottom of other applications. While we're talking about this snap window option, if you tap the recent apps button, you'll notice that instead of just these rectangles that pop up here on the side, your most recently used app also has this other icon next to it. This is a snap icon, and that's another way to quickly start a snap window. And in case you're wondering, if you try to resize a snap window, then it just switches from a snap window to a regular multi-window view. Before we jump back into the settings, I wanna quickly point out that you don't have to use one of your recent applications to open a multi-window. You can instead tap this apps list button and that's going to show you all of the available applications that work with multi-window. So all you have to do from here is scroll down to another application, tap that, and now that application is gonna open up on the bottom. Jumping back into the settings, there is something else I do wanna show you. So I'm gonna switch this back to split screen view. I'm gonna go back here, and there's this other option here called pop-up view action. Now pop-up windows are really useful. I'm gonna show you why here in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. 
Now, anytime I swipe down from the corner of an application, either the left or right upper corner, it's going to break it out into a little pop-up window, and I can then move around the screen. Now, this window is resizable. If you grab a corner, you can scale both the width and the height at the same time, or if you grab just a side, you can scale the width, and if you grab just the top or bottom, you can scale the height. From here, you can see that there are three options in the corner. The X obviously closes the pop-up window. The little expand icon expands it to a full open application again. And the other icon here is a minimize option. So if I tap that, I now get a miniature little icon that I can move around the screen for the application. Then if I want to open the application again, I just tap the icon and it opens back up in this pop-up window view. Now this is particularly useful for things like social media applications. So if I go over here and I open up Twitter, and I just kind of drag this down. This is great, so if you're constantly on Twitter or any other social media application, you can hop on here into a pop-up window view, quickly respond to any messages that someone sends you, and then you can go ahead and minimize it back down, and then just push it off to the side of your screen, and then if you get another notification, you can quickly open it back up, reply to it, minimize it, and then just keep it always readily available. This is obviously also great for different messaging apps as well, like WhatsApp or just the built-in messages app as well. And it's also great for things like a calculator. So if you need to do some quick math based on some numbers that are on your screen, this little pop-up window is a great way to do that. And as you can see, you can have multiple pop-up windows open at the same time. The limit for pop-up windows open at the same time is five. So I can have five of these little windows all around the screen and have an application open behind them at the same time. And you can even have applications open in multi-window behind that. Now that gets a little bit ridiculous. You're never gonna have five of these little windows open at the same time and two applications open behind it. But in case you're wondering, you can do that. And you can also minimize a bunch of these. So I just minimized both of these and that shows up in this little folder here with all these little pop-up icons. And you can have up to 21 of these. So if I go ahead and open play music and I put this in a pop-up and I minimize that, you'll see that I now have three of them. And as you keep going, it'll fill this little folder and you can just scroll across to see all the other applications. So at any time you can come back and tap another one and you open that particular application in pop-up view mode. If I go back in here, tap a second one, now both of them are open and then so on and so on. So now I have three open and so forth. And as I minimize them, they go right back into this little folder here. So in total, you can have up to 21 pop-up windows minimized in this little folder, as well as five open pop-up windows and two multi-windows open behind that. And in case you're wondering, if you already have five windows open in pop-up view mode, and you try to open a sixth in pop-up view mode, it'll just minimize the first one that you opened. And the same thing for this pop-up view folder. If I put 21 in here, and then I try to put a 22nd one in here, it'll actually clear the first one I put in, so the one that's all the way at the end of the list, that one will just be removed from the list and replaced with a new one. A few more details to know about this little folder here. If you wanna close one of these, you can just long press it and drag it to the little remove trash can there. Alternatively, if you go into your recent apps, you can close out different applications like that. And you'll see that the Messages app no longer shows up in here because I just cleared it out in my recent apps mode. So if I close all, all of these are going to disappear out of this or all just gonna close out completely. And if I wanna close all of these in one shot but don't wanna clear out my recent applications, then I can long press them and drag them to the little remove icon there. And if I go to my recent applications, you'll see that they're still open in the background. I can jump right back into them without having to reload them. I almost forgot, if you're gonna write something in pop-up view mode, you actually get a full keyboard at the bottom. So that's a really nice thing. You don't get some miniature keyboard in this miniature application. You do get your full-size keyboard when you're using pop-up view. Now that we've covered all the settings and pop-up view, it's time to cover the traditional multi-window mode. As you can see, there's a black bar that goes across the middle separating these two applications. And if I drag this bar up or down, I can resize the applications. If I were to drag this all the way down, I would close out of the bottom application. And just the same, if I were to drag it all the way up, I would close out of the top application. Multi-window also works in landscape mode, and this works by wrapping texts. So it's basically going to compress all of your text in this way, and then just have the text fill in more lines underneath. And so you can see that here on Twitter, if I drag this center bar over, then that text just takes up more lines. And if I drag it back the other way, the text takes up less lines. The keyboard, when you're in landscape mode, works in a very interesting way. So if I wanted to create a new tweet, I would tap this, 
then that takes Twitter and makes it into a full non-multi-window mode, but in landscape view, so I can type whatever message I want. And then when I'm done, I can just back out and go straight back into this multi-window view. However, if I try to enter text into a lot of built-in applications like the Messages app, then it keeps it in multi-window view and then lets me just type in this little window here. But to be honest, in landscape mode, you get very little real estate, especially when you have two windows at the top. So it just makes sense to turn the phone into landscape mode and do all of your typing that way. Besides using this bar for resizing, you can also just tap the bar to get a few options here. If you tap this little plus icon with sort of a house looking thing around it, then it's going to create an app pair based on these two applications. So if I were to close these applications and go to my home screen, you'd see that there's now a messages and gallery app pair. So if I tap that, that's going to open the messages application and the gallery application in one shot. And it is dependent on which app is on the top and which one's on the bottom for that app pair. So since messages was on top and the gallery is on the bottom, that's how it's going to open the app pair every time. If you want to change that, tap this center bar again and tap this little swap icon and it'll switch the windows. Then tap the bar again, tap add to home screen, go back to your home screen and you'll see that there is another one now. So here it shows that the gallery is on top and the messages are on the bottom. And here it shows messages on top and gallery on the bottom. So if I open this one, you'll see gallery is now on top, messages on the bottom. There's also a snap window shortcut, and this is going to snap whichever window is currently highlighted. So if you look here, there's this black bar, but just above it, there's a blue bar. That blue bar tells me that the upper application is highlighted and active. If I tap below into the other application, that blue bar moves to the bottom to let me know that the bottom application is highlighted. So if I want to make a snap window from the top window, I first have to highlight the top window with this little bar here, then tap the center bar, then tap the snap window, and I can make a snap window of the top window like this. And same for the bottom application. If I tap the bottom app, tap the bar, tap snap window, now it's for the bottom application. The last option here is for pop-up view. This is also dependent on which application is highlighted. So as you can see, I have the bottom application highlighted. So if I tap the pop-up window icon, it's going to make the bottom app go up into this little pop-up window. And if I want to put this back into multi-window view, I can just grab the bar, drag it till I see the blue section pop up at the bottom, then let go, and it goes back into the multi-window view. The same also works for the top of the screen. If I drag it to the top section, then I can go ahead and snap it there as well. The last option here is to close out of whichever application is currently highlighted. Now this doesn't completely close out of it. All it does is exit multi-window view and keeps the other application as your active application. So as you can see here, if I close out my messaging application and I go ahead and hit my recent apps button, the messaging application is still there. It's just not in multi-window view anymore. Another way to close out a multi-window is to simply hold the recent apps button. Anytime you've had two applications open at the same time in multi-window mode and then close out of multi-window mode, that previous pair is going to show in your recent applications. So if I tap that, it's going to reopen both of those applications in multi-window view. There are a few more things you can do in multi-window mode. If you tap the recent applications button again, which you can see has now changed to a multi-window button, you can switch to any other application to have open on the bottom. Now, this only works for the bottom application. So if I highlight the top application and then tap the recent apps button again, it's still only going to change the bottom application. So if you wanted to swap, say, the top application with something else, you'd first have to switch that to the bottom, then tap the recent apps, then switch it. And then if you want that at the top, you got to switch it again. So that's kind of dumb. I don't know if that's a bug that may be fixed later, but that's just the way it is for now. Another thing to point out is that if you hit the home button, you can then navigate around your home screen, select a different application, and then that application will open up on the bottom as well. And as you can see, there's a little bar here. If I drag this bar down to the bottom, that's just going to open up my previous application and close out of multi-window view. If I drag this up instead of down, it just closes out multi-window view but keeps me at my home screen. And tapping the X does the same thing, exits multi-window mode and keeps me at my home screen. If you're using multi-window in landscape mode and then you hit the home button, it's going to keep your phone in landscape mode. 
Now, some of you may already know that you can set up your home screen to be able to work in landscape mode. So if you turn your phone sideways while on your home screen, it'll look just like this. However, if you're in multi-window mode, it doesn't matter what that setting is, it's always going to navigate back to your home screen in this landscape mode, which is really nice. And as you can see, if I tap the X here, then it's going to switch right back to portrait mode on my home screen because I don't have that landscape mode turned on for my home screen. One more thing I do want to point out while we're in landscape mode, if you tap the bar in the center, you'll see that you're missing one option. That option is snap mode, so you cannot do snap windows while you're in landscape mode for multi-window. Now it's time to show you guys a few special functions. We're going to start with a completely hidden function, and that is if you have two applications open, like the gallery and your messaging application, you can long press on an image to select it, and then long press and drag it right into your message. So if you're gonna be hopping around your gallery a lot and there's a bunch of different photos you wanna to add to a message, that's a great way to do it. Now, I do need to throw out a quick disclaimer. This doesn't work with every application. There's only a handful of applications that can do this drag and drop method. Another thing you can do with multi-window is for some applications, you can open two of the exact same application. So if I try to go into multi-window view here, you can see that I have Samsung internet open, but that's not available in my recent applications. So if I tap this apps list button, this shows me all the other apps that I have installed on my device. And as you can see, internet is there for me to open a second time. So if I tap that, now you can see I have two iterations of the internet browser open, and this is good for maybe comparing two things. So here, I've got this nice blue car, I got a nice red car, but I'm not really sure if I like the blue or the red, so I can just kind of scroll through both of these and kind of figure out which one I like better if I was gonna be purchasing one of these vehicles. And as you can see, you can scroll in both windows simultaneously. If you can't have a second iteration of a particular application open at the same time, it'll show up as a transparent icon instead of a solid icon like the rest of them. So as you can see, I have the calculator open up here on top and it won't let me select the calculator again as a second app for multi-window. But you know what does work? The My Files app. So now as you can see, I have two versions of the My Files app open at the same time. And so on this one, I can go to my internal storage and I can scroll down and go to say downloads. And then here I can scroll down to my SD card and scroll down to downloads here. And I can actually long press any document or image or anything that I have in one location to select it and then long press again and drag it up to the other location and save it in that location. Now that does a direct copy, it doesn't move. So if you wanna move it, you're gonna to have to do that by other means. But if you wanna copy things from one folder to another really quickly, that's a great way to do it. And this also works with multiple selections. So if I select say this one, this one, and this one, I can then long press and drag all three over into the other folder. Another neat thing is if I select say this one and this one, I can drag this over into a different part. So I can go and drag this into the internal storage folder or the My Files folder. So if I just wanna put this in my internal storage, I can drag it there and it'll save it to that folder instead. Something else that's worth pointing out is that scroll capture is disabled when you're in multi-window mode. So if you go to take a screenshot by holding the volume down and power buttons, mm -hmm. you'll get a scroll capture option. And if you tap that, it'll scroll down the page and create a really long screenshot as you can see here on the right. Well, if you are in multi-window view, so let me go ahead and open up another Samsung internet app here, and I go ahead and try mm -hmm. to take another screenshot, that scroll capture is now gone. Now that makes sense. I'm not sure how they would try to scroll both of these and match them together. I mean, I'm sure they could figure out a way to do it in software, but that is a feature that is currently disabled when you're in multi-window mode. And in case you're wondering, it's also disabled anytime you have a pop-up window open. Mm -hmm. The last feature I want to show you is really hidden. So here I am in the Netflix application, and if I try to swipe down from the corner, it's going to tell me that I can't open Netflix in multi-window view. But that'd be a great application to open in multi-window view because you can have a Netflix video playing on top and be doing whatever else you want to do on the bottom. So if you want to enable multi-window for all applications, there is a trick to do it, and it's pretty well hidden. First, you need to go to your settings, Scroll down to About Phone, tap Software Information, then tap Build a Number, 
a bunch of times until you can unlock developer options, then draw your pattern to actually unlock developer options, then it'll say developer mode has been turned on. Go back out to your main settings page, then scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see that you'll have a new option here at the bottom called developer options. If you tap that, you get a bunch of options that you need to be very careful with. I highly recommend not changing any of these settings in here. Don't go ahead and turn on different toggles and do different stuff because that could be very bad for your phone if you don't know what you're doing. So ignore everything, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see this option here, force activities to be resizable. It says make all activities resizable from multi-window regardless of manifest values. So applications where it says that they cannot open up in multi-window, turn this toggle on, and it'll make those applications open in multi-window. Now this could be a little buggy with those different applications, but you can at least force them to open in multi-window mode. So in order for this to work, you are going to need to restart your phone. So let me do that now. All right, now that I've restarted my phone, I've gone back into the Netflix application, swipe down from the corner, and you can see I can now open Netflix in multi-window. So now I can go ahead and play a video and have it snapped to the top so I can do other things on my phone while watching the Netflix video. Now I'm not going to demonstrate that because of copyright reasons, but it does work. So if I open up the internet browser here, you can see that I can actually snap Netflix to the top, swipe up like that. And if I play the video, it's just going to take up that space right there and I can do whatever else I wanna do on my phone while the video is playing. So there you have it guys, everything that makes multi-window awesome. Let me know what your favorite multi-window feature is in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video if you liked it, share it if you loved it, and subscribe to see my upcoming content. And while you're at it, smack that notification bell so you can be the first to know when a new video drops. That's it for this tech episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.